guitarist Dennis Tate, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Amps. And I'm outside here. It's a hot Sunday evening in Bloomington, Indiana. And, um, well, a while ago, I sold a, um, a solid state amp head. And so I wanted to replace it with a tube head. Uh, in particular, um, I definitely knew I wanted a tube amp. Um, however, I had um, several smaller, like 15 watt tube amps. And they're fine. I mean, I really like them. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I really wanted something more powerful. Um, louder, kind of bigger. Um, and, and the problem is cost. Uh, I went looking, you know, online. Uh, and unfortunately, my budget was about $300. I'm sorry, but in in two amp terms, that doesn't get you a lot. You know, I'm sorry, it just doesn't. Um, now, if you've been following the channel, you should subscribe to follow the channel. Um, you'll remember that I uh, was looking for a two amp head uh, a while ago. You know, and went looking around and so on. And, uh, well, the best I could come up for $300 or under was a Fender Super Chap X2. Um, that was $299. And for some reason, they discontinued the head version. So you can't get them new anymore. And, and the, the next replacement up is $1,000. I'm not exaggerating. I mean, nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. I'm sorry, but that adds up to to me about a thousand dollars, right? And that's just out of my budget. There's no way. A thousand dollars? No way. Um. So then I looked around on the used market. You know, and well, at three hundred dollars or under for a tube amp, there's simply not much around. You know, um, and I did see a uh, a crate, right? Uh, v eighteen, I think it was a five watt little combo amp. Right, um, and that was about three hundred dollars. Uh, only problem is the guy's in the next state over, right? So you gotta pay shipping on that on top of it. And I'm sorry, when you ship a tube amp, that's heavy. First of all, they're usually very heavy, and on top of that, you know, the, the tubes are very fragile, so they can break and stuff. So I kept looking around, um, uh, even on like just Guitar Center, the used website, you know. Um, for 300 bucks there just wasn't much there. Um, that I was interested in anyway. You know. Now, what I really wanted was a clean tube sound. That's all, you know. Um, didn't really care about the gain channel. Here. You know, for me, if I, if I ever want gain, which I usually don't, um, but if I do, uh, 
I, I just use a pedal, you know, on the clean channel. So, so that wasn't important to me. Now, it may be important to some. You know, I mean, I understand that, but... So anyway, um, so I looked around locally, you know, Craigslist, Facebook, and all that. Um, and even there, I was kind of disappointed. In fact, I was quite surprised, to be honest with you. I mean, I saw a bunch of little, you know, kind of crates and solid state amps, you know, little practice amps and stuff. Um, and a bunch of solid state amps, you know. And for me, I mean, uh, um, other than sometimes, you know, uh, some kind of stereo chorus type amp, I'm just not a big fan of solid state. Even though I use the clean channel, you know, you think I'm, I mean, I, there are exceptions solid state wise. There are amps that I like very much that are solid state. But then when it came to tube heads and things and tube amps in general, I mean, the, I think the least expensive I found locally was like $525, right? And that'd be a really good amp. Unfortunately, it was quite a ways away. So, but then I run across this ad, and it says, 90s, carbon, right? MTS 3200, all tube, 100 watt head, 300 bucks. Wow. Now, keep in mind, this thing came out in the 90s, right? So, I mean, you're not going to get a, you know, a like new amp. So, you know, tube amps are pretty tough to begin with. But still, a 90s carbon, I mean, it's going to be over 20 years old. However... Um, from my experience, I have the Carbon X100B 100 watt tube amps, and it has the perfect clean sound. I just love, I love that amp. And in fact, if you'll know the uh, the film Crossroads, right? With Ralph Macchio and Steve I, right? And they have the dual, right? Well, that's the Carbon X100B. Steve I would play that. Um, he did a little sound page in Guitar Player, which is a little record that came with the magazine. And it was Blues Powder featuring the Carbon X100B. Right? So they're really good amps. I mean, I'm sort of familiar with them. And it's exactly the kind of sound I was looking for. And you have to keep in mind, I was looking at other ads and things, and they were, they were all like, I think, 700, 1100, 1000. You know, there was a Friedman on there, 1400. Yeah, I mean, these are outrageously expensive. And then there was this little lowly carbon tube amp for 300 bucks. And I thought, man, for 300 bucks, there must be something wrong with it. Right? And, uh, I looked in the well, it wasn't quite local, let's put it that way. Um, however, so I said, okay, well, I'll try that. So I contacted the guy, and uh, 
Well, luckily for me, he was able to, um, he'd come down and I'd meet him in town here, right? Well, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, so I went ahead and got it and picked it up. Alright. And so let's take a look at it. Alright, now here is the Carbon MTS 3200. Alright, all tomb. What does it say? Master Tube Series. 50th Anniversary Edition Tube Head. And it's sitting on my Vox 212 Homemade Cab. Let's take a look at this thing. Holy smokes, look at this. There we go. Alright, so you've got your lead channel here. Volume, drive, bass, mid, treble. And then you've got your channel switch here. And then here's the clean channel. And this is where you have the problematic volume. Little doodad. Um, bass, mid, treble. Lead one presence. So interestingly, the presence on the... Uh, what's it called? The is on the drive channel. Now the clean channel also has a present, but it's just a switch. My guess is probably a bright switch or something. I don't know. It says present. Never tried it. Um, master reverb right here. It's a digital reverb, and it sounds great. No problems. You know. Um, to be quite frank, um, I preferred digital reverbs and I do spring reverbs like real spring reverbs you know that's just me though and then you've got a standby and an off on switch so pretty pretty darn sweet and uh, alright let me flip it around here and uh, here you go this is the back of it so, pretty well protected, uh, you know, in the cabinet. Cabinet's pretty decent shape. Now, here we go. Let's take a look. What do we have back here? Got an effects loop, which is very nice. It's just a, um, you know, mono effects loop. And then you've got a... I don't know what that is. What is that? Mmm. Let me take a look. Hold on. What is that? Ah, uh, yeah. Foot switch. Okay. To switch the channel. Now, interestingly, it's got a, it's got a uh, direct out. Surprisingly. Right? Pretty cool. And it's cabinet voiced. For direct out. Okay. Next to that, you have a bias switch. So this amp will accept either the, what is it, V6L6GC or EL, EL34s, I think. Anyway, it's got a bias switch. So you can actually put two different kinds of tubes in there. Okay, next to it, you've got 50 or 100 watt, 4, 8, or 16 ohm two output jacks and then if you can see in here big old tube amps or tubes there they are I know two of them at least are JJ's um, I don't know if it's a matching quartet or not who knows anyway so there it is um, kinda heavy you know, it's not light, um, but it's awfully solid. So there you go. So 
I went ahead and got it home and plugged it into a cabinet. I'm not sure which one it was, you know. And well, I think the amp has a 50 watt and a 100 watt mode. I don't remember which one I was on. I think I tried them both. And I turned the amp up to 5, everything on 5 on the clean channel. And man, it was distorting and, right? It just sounded terrible. I don't know. I, like, oh man, I got ripped. Right? But, not so. In fact, because what I didn't realize is that this is a beast of a tube head. I mean, this is a full size tube head, and it's a freaking beast. Right? So, you know, I turned the volume down a bit, you know, and I tried a couple different cabinets, and it seemed to like certain cabinets more than others, you know, and I think part of that was the, uh, um, well, the volume and whether the speaker could even handle it, you know, I mean, I think that amp head was really made for a 4x12 that can handle that kind of wattage. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of like, man, well, what's going on here? You know, where's the... Well, where's that carbon clean sound I love? Right? I wasn't getting that. Man. So what was going on? Well... One, I had the amp turned up too high. Um, the other thing is, it, it probably hasn't been really played in quite a while, because what I noticed is, um, the, all the knobs and things were, you know, uh, kind of crackly and noisy type things, you know, and, but, you know, give them a few twists and things, and kind of cleans up. Now, what I did notice is that the the clean channel volume knob, right, um, definitely needs clean to replace at some point. You know. It reminds me of an old mixer. You know, those old mixer knobs. Right? Those audio mixers. Um, when they get old, you know, the knobs get all scratchy and stuff like that. Well, this volume knob is kind of like that. And beyond that, um, as a result, probably, I'm guessing, I don't think it's quite grounded quite well. And the reason I know that is, um, it's actually, the amp is pretty quiet. But if you touch the volume knob, right, it buzzes. You get a buzzing sound. Um, clear sign that it's not properly grounded, okay, and, and that can definitely happen on a volume knob. So at some point, probably that, you know, when the amp is serviced, which it'll be at some point, replace that knob, you know, and, I, and the other thing is, um, I had it turned up pretty loud, okay, and so I was playing, and I was going, man, what is it, all this distortion, and there's a little light on the lead channel, okay, and well, it's only supposed to come on if you have the lead channel on, right, however, it would kind of come on sometimes, kind of blinking, at some point, even though I was on the clean channel. I'm going, what is it? And it would kind of distort a little, and I was going, oh no, it's the amp channel bleeding into the clean channel, the distorted channel. There's something wrong with this amp and things. Well, guess what? I don't think that's 
the case at all. In fact, um, I think what it is is that when you're overloading the circuit, it actually tells you with that little blinking light on the distortion channel. You know, I could be wrong about that, but it sure doesn't seem so. Um, you know, and when I turn down the, the volume a little bit, that cer it certainly went away. So to make a long story short, um, other than the volume knob, the amp's in really pretty good shape, which is great news, right? And I mean, you know, I thought, oh no, maybe it needs new tubes, you know, um, and this amp has a lot of tubes. You know, it's got four, the 6L, 6GC or something, a big power tubes, four of them. And behind that, there are five, count them, five, 12AX7 preamp tubes. You know, now compare that to a, you know, the little uh, Fender X2, you know, that has two power tubes and, and one preamp tube. You know, I think that's right. Or maybe it's two preamp tubes, two power tubes. Anyway, very few tubes in, in comparison, but nowhere near the power. Um, so, anyway, um, now the good news for me is that the amp works fine, right? Um, and, you know, you're not going to be moving the volume knob all the time. And it only is kind of a little scratchy when you move it. Right? So, not that big an issue. You know? Um, and at first I thought that it was, um, you know, messing with the sound. Um... But now I'm not so sure that that's the case at all. How? Because I got a great sound out of it, you know, when I turned it down a bit. Um, so I think what I was doing was overdriving the clean preamp a little. And what I wanted was a really clean sound. Um, then the other thing is, um, as it turns out, for whatever reason, I couldn't tell you why, certain amps like certain cabinets, audio speaker cabinets, you know, um, and so I tried a bunch of different cabinets and was quite stunned to find that for whatever reason, I couldn't tell you why, that this particular amp likes my do-it-yourself box 212 cabinet. And I had done a video on that previously, right, where I had taken a, a Vox amp that no longer worked. It had the speakers. Um, and so I made it into a speaker cabinet, right? Running at 16 ohm, um, but it could also run at um, 8 ohm or even 4 ohm because it had the little panel on the back called the plug and play. Um, so anyway, this carbon amp, man, it just sounded awesome, just great um, with this Vox cabinet. So let's take a listen to it. And keep in mind, uh, just before we do, that, um, and I think maybe this is part of the reason, they're not exactly the most efficient speakers in the world in that cabinet, you know? And there's two of them. Uh, so, for whatever reason, that cabinet loves 
that amp running at 100 watts rather than the 50 watt mode. I mean, it sounds fine with the 50 watt mode, don't get me wrong, right? But at the 100 watt mode, it's really something to behold. So let's take a listen to it. It's a two.
it's got really strong um, low end there. And if we add some, uh, like some echo type stuff. audio cabinet and it has one Celestian 7080 speaker in it and <clears throat> it sounded like doo doo with the carbon and yet it sounds great with the Fender Super Champ X2 and I think a lot of that has to do with the wattage and the power of the amp right I mean, here, let's face it, not every cabinet can handle the power of the carbon. I mean, those aren't just 100 watts, those are 100 power watts. Right? Though, strangely enough, um, I tried a couple of cabinets that I had uh, when it was running at the 50 watt mode. That's fine. You know. Uh, no problems there, but man, it's a hundred watts with that Vox cabinet. Seems to work, and par for the course, that carbon head, well, you don't really realize, uh, especially in person, it, it's kind of heavy, <laughs> right? I mean, it's got that gigantic, you know, output transformer in it. Pretty heavy. Well, of course, the Vox cabinet um, was already quite heavy, you know, I guess. Uh, but man, when we added the back panel and reinforced it, it became much heavier as well, you know. There you go. So that's what you can get for 300 bucks. So, and to be quite honest, I haven't seen anything better in that price range, you know, not at all, mm -hmm. you know, all I've seen are these little bitty amps, you know, in that price range, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a purpose for those too, you know, but you're not going to get quite the, as big a sound, really. So that's it. That was my adventure so far with the, the Carmen MTS 3200. Right? Very pleased. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Now maybe am I right or am I right? 100 watt amp will beat a 15 watt amp any day. Am I right? <laughs>